Hello and welcome to the video. This is my overview and review of this thing here. This is the Cinebot 30 from Gep RC. Now I've had quite a few of this style of quads in over the past several years and it's not something that I tend to fly regularly only because there are a number of limitations typically to get into this form factor to make it perfect for like a Cine Whoop or Cine Quad particularly around the amount of time that you can actually spend flying. And lots of the ones that I have here, four, five, six minutes is more the norm. However, GEPRC have addressed the issues that I've had with things like this, and this is a little bit different from all the other ones that I've tried so far. Now, this is available in both 4S and 6S versions, and I have the 6S version here. This gives you the longest flight time, and you can get about... 10 to 12 minutes out of this thing, even if you are carrying something like a naked GoPro or a Pinot or something like a Caddox Walnut or something like that at the front. Now it is available in lots of different versions. I happen to have the one here with the Nebula Pro. I'll show you some flight footage, kind of give you an idea of what it flies like. So having the Nebula Pro in here with the DJI, the unit light unit, a uh, single antenna at the back means that it flies and looks very much like any other DJI ship in terms of the FPV anyway. And it's not a little lightweight Cine Whoop either. This weighs 413 grams with the 1100 milliamp hour 6S battery that I'm flying it with. And it's gonna add the camera weight on the front here, but it can easily handle that additional weight. Hover point without a camera is only about 20%. And that's the other thing that's different about this as well. Not only does it give you some serious amount of time in the air, it also doesn't feel like you're flying this style of quad. It feels like you're flying something else, like my beloved four inch crocodile baby from Get RC or one of those other models. Just happens to be in this particular form factor. So there are a couple of features that it's talking about on the website. The first is that this is a quick disassembly design. Only six screws are needed at the top to take the whole thing apart. And I've tried that here and it works incredibly well. Everything is going into kind of captive nuts and the bolts are definitely higher grade than the usual Chinesium that we tend to get in lots of stuff these days. It is made from impact resistant PC material and the whole thing is injection molded which is nice to see with so much 3D printed stuff that we're getting in the hobby now. And that does seem to survive crashes pretty well from the flying that I've had here. The front camera mount includes some 7075 aluminium alloy. That is a great addition. It means that when you bounce and roll about stuff, it's going to protect your expensive HD FPV camera at the front. Lots of larger frames have had these kind of cages for a very long time, so it's great to see it on the front as this as well. And included in the propeller guards is a light. So it's a cob light strip. Initially, I wasn't sure if it was on like an EL wire, but it's much brighter than that. And it is incredibly light and means that in the darker conditions, particularly now when we're in winter, it makes it very easy to see line of sight. Or if it comes down in the grass and you can't quite see it, it does have the beeper function set up. We'll see that in a moment. But by activating the lights as well, it is nice and bright and easy to spot. Also has a new vibration isolating pad at the front that's there to mount your action camera on. It does come with the bracket in the pack and there is some captive nuts underneath. Now this is a new design from Gep RC and I have been playing with it, but I'm gonna need another month or two to put it through its full paces. But initial impressions are it's working very well to get rid of any vibration into your camera. Definitely something you need if you're recording at those higher frame rates. 1804 motors and inside running everything is a GEP F722 45 amp all-in-one flight controller and ESC stack at the top. Again, if we go through the specifications, this is the Cinebot 30. This one is the HD Nebula Pro version on 6S, 127 millimeter wheelbase, top plate thickness is three millimeters, Flight controller is an F722 45 amp all-in-one unit, and then it's got the Vista, the air unit light, underneath as well and that seems to stay nice and cool in flight. Camera at the front is the excellent Caddix Nebula Pro and the propellers are HQ Prop T76 millimeters. Antenna at the back is a small little unit, it's the Pino 
120 millimeter left hand polarized but seems to work very nicely in the flying I've done here and the motors are speed x2 1804 2450kV for the 6S version and 3450kV for the 4S version. In terms of the setup, as I said at the beginning, both the USB connectors on this are easy to get to, so you can plug it into the computer to tweak the beats flight stuff, and you can also get in there to do things like play with the DJI system. You can also get to the bind button without too much trouble, without having to take the whole thing apart. So let's very quickly have a look at the Beats Flight settings. Dump and differ down below if you want to have a look. Let's put it in expert mode. Love the fact there is something in the data flash. This has been armed and tested before it left the factory, which is great. Everything's working beautifully on the bench. So ports are configured like this. Nothing's really set up apart from having MSP on UART1. I'm guessing that is to talk to the DJI Air unit so that we can have the on-screen display. Nothing really in, in here. 8K gyro and PID loop frequency. So even though it's an F7 processor, it's running pretty hard. Uh, that's the only thing I've spotted on this. 62, 61% just sat here on the bench, not even flying. Power and battery looks like this. Seems to work quite nicely. Fail safe is set to drop, which is how I like it. PID tuning has these settings. Again, dump and differ down below if you really want to have a look at all of the bits and pieces of how it's set up. Receiver is set for SBUS, and by default, it is configured with this one to use the DJI uh, FPV controller. You will have to come in here and play with modes. This is not the way that I have it, so I've changed it after this to suit the way that I like it with the DJI FPV controller. The other tab I'd recommend you come and have a play with is the on-screen display one. This is how it's set by default. I don't like that at all. I've changed it to how I like it. So let's cut to the chase. Let's talk about what it's like to actually fly. Now on the website, it talks about the fact that it is super quiet. And while I would agree that it is quiet, I wouldn't say it's super quiet. If you are using the throttle aggressively, then you've got that high kind of whining buzz that you get from these kind of cine quads. But if you're just poodling around, then yeah, once you're 100 meters away from somebody, it starts to become difficult to hear over the noises that you get outside. Half a point for this is incredibly low. It's only at about 20%. So there is absolutely tons of power on this, even when it's got the big battery on. So if you want to put an action camera on here, no problem at all. However, without the action camera on it, it gives you a little bit more speed, a little bit more punch that makes it very, very fun to fly. Power is very good too. Responsiveness is excellent. It's not an acro model, but it does mean that if you're flying along and you realize that actually, you know what, I'm a bit close to the top of that tree, you can just blip the throttle and it will very quickly pop into the air and give you that extra altitude that you need. So you don't have to plan in advance on how you avoid some of the obstacles. It is very responsive and very fun. And speed is good too. Because it has lots of power and lots of headroom, you can take it out of horizon, stick it into acro, and have a lot of fun zooming around. The big thing about this, of course, is not only the fact that it has all that power, it's the fact that it can do it and stay in the air for 10 to 12 minutes on this 6S model. That means that rather than have to Get, have my buddy flying the wing or whatever we're filming, have him flying around and get into position and then launch the quad and have a frantic three or four minutes of flying around trying to get the footage that I want. I can just take my time. I can get a little further away. I can spend more time in the air. I can follow things around, which for the kind of filming that I do is exactly the kind of stuff that I want. 10 minutes is exactly the kind of flight time that I need for the kind of stuff that I do here. Or you can just take everything off and have about 12 minutes flying around and just have a lot of fun with it. And this is where I think this quad for me scores much higher than the other kinds of cine quads that I've had in of this style. Tune is very soft and easy to fly smoothly. And again, I'm using mine with my DJI FPV controller bound to the air unit light. Although you can get different receivers if you don't have one of those. So in terms of the stuff I like for this, there is an awful lot to like. I like the fact that we get much longer flight times. Over 10 minutes out of something like this is 
perfect. I also like how they have still figured out a way to give us access to the flight controller and also the DJI Air Unit USB connector for things like upgrading and configuration. I do like the lights in the outside as well. I thought it was EL wire when I first looked at it. However, I think it's actually mini LEDs looking more closely. And I love the fact that they've already set it up so that you can turn it off at the flick of a switch. That is incredibly useful for those times when you're flying in darker conditions and also for when you want to conserve the front battery on a sunny day to give you even more time flying around. I like how they have 4S and 6S options and they have different options for the digital HD system as well. It's nice to see not just it being analog or the DJI HD system, but other things starting to creep in too. So thumbs up, Get RC. Thank you for starting to sell ready to fly stuff that has other things in apart from DJI. I do like the way the frame is put together. This injection molded piece is surviving incredibly well. It seems very rigid and strong and that kind of light runs around the inside and you have kind of this uh, stack in the middle. By removing just six screws, you can take the top off and the top, which includes the all-in-one flight controller, is connected to the DJI system underneath by two cables with plugs. So you can very easily take this apart if you need to, to get into stuff. But for setup, as I've already covered, it's incredibly easy. You don't need to mess about. The fact that the air unit's already set up and pre-authorized, Betaflight is set up. I would only connect it just to tweak the modes and the OSD to your liking. This is one of those things that is really lots of fun and very happy to get closer to trees and bushes and things like that with something like this with these props being protected and I like the fact that there are things like the spare props and screws and also the adapters for things like an action camera so you can run it from the balance tap really good thinking from get rc they've actually put a lot of thought into this to make sure that pretty much everything you need is ready to rock and roll there are only a couple of things to be aware of. Um, the main one, of course, is the price. This isn't cheap, but this is a quality piece of kit. And I don't use superlatives in my videos very often, but this is genuinely impressive. With some of the other models that I've had in here, things like the Synolog 25, the Synolog 35, they are very nice quadcopters, but they kind of feel like one-trick ponies. And they can fly around and get you those cinematic shots, but they're not good for anything else really. Relatively short flight times, not huge amounts of power. Um, I normally take one of those if I'm filming and something else along as well for the fun bit of the flying where I'm just out there to enjoy the sensation of flying around in the sky. The great thing about this is that this will actually do both of those roles. You can actually use it as a cine quad, but because it has more power and it's got a longer flight time, I'm quite happy to fly this around as my fun quad as well. So I don't need to take two quads to the field for those days. I can just stick this in the bag. And that also means that I don't have to buy two quads either. I could just do everything with this. So if you have been looking for something to, as a cine quad, uh, this at the moment is definitely now my top pick. Not only because it performs incredibly well as a cine quad, with the flying style, the amount of room it's got, the amount of endurance and power, but also the fact that for those days where you don't want it as a cine quad, you can just take the camera off the front if you want to give you a maximum flight time and just fly it around and have an awful lot of fun. This will be replacing my little Cine Log 25 that I've been using for years and years. And for those times when I want to go to the field and I want one quad that can do both jobs very well, this is what I'm going to take. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.